Stardew Valley Community Center glitchless speedruns are the speedrun in the Stardew Valley community. The true any percent goal. They are regarded as the most important category in the Stardew Valley sphere, as until perfection was added, it was the closest thing to beating the game that we had. This is a tense three hour speedrun where you'll need to collect over 100 items and keep track of every single one. You'll have to be fighting against both your speedrun timer, the in-game clock, and the heaps of RNG of Stardew Valley like Brute Bat Spawns, Mines Floor, and the STUPID CROP FAIRY who always comes at the worst times. For the past three years, the route has been exactly the same. Running on the 1.4 patch of Stardew Valley, Haboo stood at the top of the leaderboards. But for the first time, massive changes are coming to the Stardew Valley scene with more runs than ever being submitted and all of them being run on the 1.5.5 patch. With the world record time going down a full 11 minutes to what it was just four months ago. So what changed and why is the run all of a sudden becoming so heavily optimized? Well, before we get there, you need to understand why the community center speedrun is being run on the 1.4 patch for three years straight. As anyone who has ever played Stardew Valley can tell you, the most time consuming part of the game is far and away the amount of time I spend looking at alternate anime portrait packs on Nexus, I mean, uh, the mines. The, mine, the mines take a lot of time. Since most of you guys have probably only made it down to level 20 of the mines, let me break down the basic setup of them. The mines are divided into three different sections. The cavernous copper sections, the icy iron sections, and the flaming hot gold sections. Obviously, each of these sections have specific drops, making it necessary to go all the way down to the last section at floor 80 in order to get gold ore and fire quartz, which won't spawn on any earlier floors. But like I said before, getting all the way down to floor 80 of the mines is going to take a ton of time, especially when all we've got is this regular quality pickaxe. Once we get down to the iron floors, every single rock will start taking many hits to break through. This not only takes a ton of time, but also quickly drains our energy. So speedrunners had to think of something smarter, something that only a true genius could think of. Explosions. That's right, speedrunners determined that the fastest way to chug through the mines would be by using bombs. But not just any bombs, specifically using explosive ammo from the slingshot. If you don't know, explosive ammo is the fastest way of mining in the game. This is due to three main factors. The explosions blow up a large area of rocks at once, using bombs requires no energy, and unlike regular bombs, explosive ammo explodes immediately on impact. That way you don't need to sit around and wait for the bombs to explode. Who would have thought a relaxing farming game like Stardew would require you to commit war crimes on the monsters of the mountain in order to build the town's YMCA just a little bit faster? But trust me, it is worth it, as this method cuts down the required time in the mines by half. But how do you obtain the forbidden RPG missile ammo? Well, you unlock the crafting recipe at combat level 8. And seeing as most Stardew Valley speedruns get to around combat level 1, that's just slightly out of reach for us. Luckily, good old Marlin sells the ammo at the Adventurer's Guild for just 100 G, which is astonishingly cheap for a bomb. I mean, dang, Linus is worried about Sebastian throwing rocks at his tent. Imagine what's gonna happen after he kills 10 slimes and starts buying mini nukes. Regardless, because of the need to accumulate so much explosive ammo, it's necessary to save up a good chunk of your funds in order to afford purchasing it. Most runs require around 100 explosive ammo, meaning they would need to save 10,000 G to buy it all. After picking up a slingshot, runners would happily shoot their bombs all the way down to floor 80 of the mines where they'd pick up some gold and hopefully farm for their forbidden fire quartz. Getting the gold wasn't just for the blacksmith bundle though, it was also super useful in making quality sprinklers. These could then be left out to do all the watering for the rest of the run, generating all the money we'd need. And with that, the route was set. And it was set that way for a very long time. But despite speedrunners using explosive ammo for years, in December of 2019, something would come that would forever shake the Stardew Valley speedrunning scene. Patch 1.4.1 One word and three numbers that make every Stardew Valley speedrunner shake in their boots. You see, the 1.4 update introduced a ton of new features into the game, like the Desert Trader, the Movie Theater, the Quarry Mine. It was a pretty massive expansion. And with so many things added, Concerned Ape let some particularly unbalanced things slip through the cracks. 
So just one week after the original release of 1.4, Concerned Ape would add three nerfs that would permanently affect Stardew Valley pros. The first two were mostly targeting min-max players. Previously, if you used a weapon's secondary attack, then pause, the timer on the secondary attack would refill back up in the menu. This was particularly broken on hammers and clubs, where you could just sit there and infinitely string together powerful shockwave attacks. Concerned Ape changed it so a weapon's secondary attack meter would only refill when real in-game time passed. Next to fall was the Desert Trader. You may know that you can trade three prismatic shards for a magic rock candy at the Trader every Thursday, but back in 1.4's original release, you could actually trade for as many as you'd like there. Concerned Ape nerfed this so that you could only get one per day. But the last change, the last change was the most damning of them all. For the last nerf of the patch, Concerned Ape set his eyes on our beloved explosive ammo. But it couldn't be that bad, right? Firstly, he increased the price from 100G all the way to 300G. Now, this was obviously not great, as the speedrun would now require an additional 20,000G. But you know, it, it could be rerouted. Grab a couple more strawberries, I guess. Concerned Ape also changed it so the Adventurer's Guild wouldn't start stocking explosive ammo until you actually unlock the recipe at combat level 8. <laughs> What do you think of that? Abu. This is my perfect victory! And with that, the 1.4.1 update completely killed Stardew Valley speedrun. Explosive ammo is used to save so much time, and with the mines being so random and it requiring such a huge pool of resources, chugging through it manually with just the pickaxe is just completely unviable. So what did Stardew Valley speedrunners do? Did they just try roughing it through with the pickaxe? Did they think of a new solution that would save time? Did they completely reroute the run? No. They just kind of said no. Instead of updating to the most recent patch, Stardew speedrunners decided instead to just run on the original 1.4 patch. And so for the next two years, all Stardew Valley Community Center and Mine speedruns would be run on that patch instead. Updates would swirl past, even the massive 1.5 update just a year later, but to no avail. Nothing could possibly beat the raw speed of explosive ammo, so speedrunners weren't changing their mind. Now, you might be wondering, why are runners in this community able to run on the 1.4 patch? Isn't it unfair that some people are running on a past version of the game while other people are running on the most current version? And you're not wrong for asking that question. Most other game communities either require all runners to play on the game on the most recent patch or split each patch into different categories. Well, the answer isn't as complex as you might think. The Stardew community itself is pretty small. I mean, yeah, the game has sold 10 million copies, but 50% of people haven't even caught 10 fish. And even more than that, the speedrunning scene for the community is even smaller. The amount of people who have the intention of speedrunning a farming simulator for three hours is literally in the single digits. So the community just kind of does whatever they want. And the fact is most speedrunners just want to have fun. And running on the 1.4 patch is the most fun. Or at least it was until very recently. But what made people switch to the more current patch? Well, it was all orchestrated by one of the greatest speedrunners in the Stardew Valley community, Cordite. You see, Cordite has always been one of the best speedrunners in the scene. In fact, he was the one who created the original 1.4 route. But he had a goal. A goal to push the Stardew community to start using the 1.5 patch. You see, in the 1.5.5 patch, Concerned Ape had actually asked the speedrunning community what changes they'd like to see added to the game. And almost every single runner asked for two things. A quicker way to buy things from stores in mass quantities, and for your settings to be the same upon each game entry. This would help as whenever you start a new save file, which speedrunners obviously do frequently, you wouldn't have to go into your settings and do small adjustments like adjust the in-game sounds and change your zoom-in level. Well, as he always does, Concerned Ape delivered on both of these promises in that you could hold down shift and control now to buy in snacks of 25, and your settings would be preserved upon dropping into the new world. With Concerned Ape being so nice to add all these requested changes for runners, the fact that they didn't run on the newest patch was kind of like a slap in the face to all his work to the community. And also, the 1.4 patch had come out over three years ago now. So many massive updates that completely changed Stardew's DNA had been released. So Cordite set out to fix that and bring people into the present. But how was he going to find a way to quickly speed through the mines? Well, the same way that I was able to get to floor 100 of the Skeleton Caverns, using lots and lots of staircases. 
You see, Coronite theorized if there's a way to amass a ton of staircases, you could just chug down the mines at an even faster rate than explosive ammo. And obviously the fastest way to generate tons and tons of staircases is to use jade to trade for them at the desert trader. But how would we get so much jade so quickly? Well, the plan was to do the same thing that I did during my depressed freshman year of college. Stay in bed for many, many, many days at a time, sleeping every single day. I promise I'm fine now. You see, while we don't have an infinite supply of crystallariums by any means, we do get one for finishing the vault bundle. And we already have to sleep for many days to process all of our pumpkins and melons into jam. So just throwing a crystallarium in there is not a huge deal. This would allow us to get tons of jade quickly that will then trade for staircases. Then we use all of these staircases to grind all the way from level 40 to the mines all the way down to level 80. While this will certainly be time consuming to sleep for that many days, not having to have the money for the explosive ammo combined with the fact that we won't actually have to dig through the mines will overall make this faster. Fortnite's new route in mind, he booted up Stardew and tried for the new community center world record. And he tried. Again. And again. And again. And again. And again. But despite his new route, he wasn't even getting close to the world record time of 2 hours and 26 minutes. Turns out that despite his improvements, the route was still slower than the good old explosive ammo route. And just like that for a while, the run had failed and the 1.4 method stayed king. But determined not to let the spirits of the past win, Cordite started working on another new route. Let's unpack the reason why we're even going down to floor 80 of the mines in the first place. And really it's all for two items. The gold bar for the blacksmith bundle and fire quartz for the geologist bundle. All that work for just two items. And really it was just one since gold ore can be bought from Clint's. So really all this trouble we were going through to get all the way down to floor 80 was just to get to fire quartz. There had to be an easier way to get the fire quartz, right? If we could do that, the furthest we'd have to go in the mines would be floor 50 for the solar essence. So what could be the easiest way to generate one? Well, the answer is actually the power of friendship. And no, I'm not kidding. You see, there's actually someone in the valley who has a readily available supply of fire quartz that he gives out to his friends. And that's Vincent. N nah, I'm just, I'm just fucking with you, it's the wizard. You may know that when you're friends with someone, they have a good chance to send you a letter in the mail with a gift attached. And for the wizard, that gift has a good possibility to be a fire quartz. So Cordite formulated that if we gave the wizard a gift on his birthday, he would have a great chance at sending us a fire quartz in the mail before the end of the run. Now you might be wondering, what if the wizard doesn't send you a fire quartz in the mail? Well, firstly, community center speedruns go all the way into winter of year two, meaning that if we give the wizard on his birthday in the very first winter, we're almost certain to get a letter before the end of the run. But even if we somehow don't get the fire quartz from the wizard in all that time, there's actually a weird quirk with friendship letters in Stardew that guarantees it drops. You see, the gifts attached to letters are not actually determined when they're sent to you. The game just sends a gift letter from the wizard. Then when you open the letter, the game determines what that gift will be. Because of this, if the wizard sends us a letter and has something other than the fire quartz attached, we can just reset the game and spam reopen the letters until we get the desired outcome. This was a massive discovery as what used to be a 20 minutes mines trip now just takes one short trip down to the wizard. And with that, the mines problem is completely solved. Now that we don't have to spend money on explosive ammo, we can reallocate all that money instead into buying gold ore for sprinklers. But all this brought out another problem. You see, there's not a lot of days we actually go outside in the first winter of the run. In fact, we really only go outside on one single day to pick up all the winter forage. But now, since we have to go out on the wizard's birthday, which is winter 17, it, it only makes sense to move this winter forage day to his birthday, right? Well, it's not so simple. You see, in addition to the regular winter forage we have to pick up for the winter foraging bundle, there's another hidden forage required, the Nautilus shell. This shell only spawns on the beach during winter, which should be no problem, right? We can just pick it up alongside all of the other winter forage on winter 17. Well, no. You see, winter 17 is actually also the day of the night market, which means the beach is completely closed down for the day, meaning we'd have to go out on an additional day to pick up the shell. This is obviously not ideal, so we need to think of another method in order to obtain the Nautilus shell. And once again, the answer lies within friendship. You see, Demetrius actually has a couple reasons that makes befriending him so good. Firstly is the aforementioned Nautilus shell, which he has a chance to gift you. Second is the ease of accessing him. Since we have to head to Robin several different times for barn, poop, and house upgrades, we can reroute one of those days to be on Demetrius' birthday, letting us very easily stop by and gift him. Third, his loved gift is super easy to obtain, as we grew tons of strawberries back in the spring, so all we have to do is save a single one. 
The last reason that becoming Demetrius' friend is so great might be the most valuable reason of all. You see, the biggest problem to overcome in Stardew speedruns is anything gated behind a time, as having to wait until super late in the day to accomplish something means you end up wasting a ton of time just waiting around for the event to become available, which is what makes the bream from the night fishing bundle so annoying. The bream doesn't become available until 6 p.m. at night, but luckily Demetrius also has a chance to send a bream in the mail meaning that by just gifting the science man once, we have the chance to cut out two really annoying items. And with that, Cordette has created a massive new route that saves tons of time. This route is also far more consistent as opposed to relying on the luck of the mind to hope that you get a good time. Thanks to the new route, the previous Community Center World's record that had stood for the past 11 months was beaten. The Boo's record-breaking 2 hour and 30 minute run was finally dethroned by Haboo himself at 2 hours and 26 minutes. And as of a couple weeks ago, he was able to beat it down again to 2 hours and 19 minutes. Not only is this new route much faster though, it's also much more accessible now that it doesn't require you to de-patch your copy of Stardew. More community center speedruns have been submitted in the past two months than the past two years of the game's lifespan. With the new route, Cordite was able to single-handedly revitalize the speedrunning community for Stardew. More and more people taking the dive into the category to celebrate this amazing game. And now, I think it's time to add myself to that list as well. Wish me luck. Huge thanks to Haboo and Cordite for all their help on this video. Make sure to check them out below. And thanks to the Stardew Valley Speedrunning Discord for all their help as well. But now, it's time to get to practicing. Bye!